what happened with um the the the, the Taliban in Afghanistan was Donald Trump went and started negotiating directly with the Taliban over the head of the government of Afghanistan, and that completely undermined it, undermined their credibility. I would not be surprised if back channels start getting open to Putin over Zelensky's head, and that will undermine him. Um, but you know, we should learn from what happened in Afghanistan, and, and my film does go through it just shows that you know if we had stayed the course a bit longer, there would have been a, that. Look, it's never going to be rosy there, put it that way, but what the worst possible outcome has had happened in Afghanistan. And if we just leave Ukraine suddenly, it'll be exactly the same. It's a similar sort of disaster. I mean, people can go and watch the film. I think it's in cinemas next year, isn't it, Afghanistan? Yes, we've got our yeah. London premiere tomorrow evening, which we're, we're excited about. Huge, yeah. I mean, we've had a massive take up because there are so many people's lives have been affected by Afghanistan. Obviously, the Afghan people themselves, who we've just completely um, pulled the rug from the, under their feet. But back here, there's so many service men and women who serve there or families who are bereaved or had people served working out in Afghanistan. Those numbers run into the millions, and it's the same in America. So we weren't sure what, what, what the feedback would be like, but... We, you know, we're, we're overwhelmed by the number of people wanting to come and see this. And and also because there's been so little accountability of our actions in Afghanistan. It seems that we go from one conflict to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, and no one's held to account for what actually went wrong. And I, I was going to ask you, I mean, what, what the biggest thing you took away from making it was. But I suppose it, it must have been that, that there has been such a lack of accountability. And ultimately, when, when we walk away from these things, everyone else's life in that area has to continue. It, it, well, exactly that, because when we were there in February, from February 2021, up until the point um, Biden announced the withdrawal by September the 11th, I was surprised as to how much the country had developed, how much young people wanted to make a success of their country, but also how reliant they were on the stamina of the US and NATO just to, to keep going a bit longer to make sure those institutions were funded, the military had um, the support that it needed to keep going because the Taliban were on the march. The decisions that were made so quickly um, and were very political in nature completely just took away those stabilizers and you know what what's extraordinary is that we've just bounced into this war this whole supporting ukraine which i believe is the right thing to do but if you look at the chain of uh, of wars that we've had since uh tony blair and george bush were in power look at iraq went into afghanistan then libya uh, and then syria it just seems like this end endless series of engagement and ultimately yes people uh, military personnel that go out there you know, we, we're involved in the front line. But what I learned by living amongst the Afghan people is the true cost is those people. You know, what they lose um, is just simply unbelievable. It's, and and that has really um, created some of the, the issues we're talking about today about immigration. It's because a, lo a large part of this is because of our meddling over in those countries. So how do you feel about it now? I mean, can you feel can you feel pride in your involvement, in, in your nation's involvement how, how do you feel about it where do you put it now i mean i i think well i speak to a lot of service personnel about this and you know we we gave it our best we know we made mistakes and you know you can be proud that we we did our best but at the same time the conflict had it was starting to achieve something and we've taken that away and it's hard to look back and think well what a great thing to have been part of because it isn't, and we're still seeing the repercussions of that. You see the horrendous atrocities committed committed by the Taliban that continue to happen. You know, the, the complete lack of rights women now have. Women are now confined to being at home, no education. All these things that we've built, that we, we physic, literally physically fought for, have gone. So it's hard to, you know, and to be honest, whether I feel pride or not isn't important. I'd still focus back on what we have done to the Afghan people. And I think... It is right and proper that we do have these schemes such as Arab to relocate people. You know, even though we're having um, issues with immigration, the fact is that we went there, we caused these problems. So we have to do something. We have some we have to have some sort of sense of accountability. Does it worry you that we are in well, we are involved in another number of conflicts at the moment in, in very different ways, it has to be said. But there are conversations going on about Ukraine, for example, about how much money, how much funding 
governments like the UK and the US are willing to give. And that's prompting quite difficult questions about what President Zelensky might be forced to do. And and again, with Israel-Gaza, you know, questions about accountability on the ground, but also internationally. How have the international community allowed things to get to this point? Do you think we're still missing the point here? It's so difficult because they are different conflicts, but they they're, they are also part of a chain of events. I mean, if I was a, a British or American partner, I would look at our history of the last 20 years. And when we say we will stay by you, we will stay the course, I would be very skeptical. If you were the Peshmerga um, in Kurdistan, you'd have seen how Don Donald Trump pulled the rug under their feet. You see the same with our allies in Afghanistan. We turn our back on them. And then now look at the questions being asked about supporting Ukraine. I think we should support them. But ultimately, Britain's voice is almost totally irrelevant. It's it's going to be up to what happens next year in the presidential election. And, that, you know, and that, I guess that's the greatest shame is just how, if you look at the sort of geopolitical landscape, um, the countries in Europe, the European Union, Britain, yes, we have a voice, um, but we, 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 we're so underfunded, we're so disunited, it, America, it's completely up to what what America decides to do. Um, and, and it's all to play for, really, after that presidential election. Do you think there's a chance that America and the UK could pull the rug from under, particularly President Zelensky? Uh, I mean, I think I, I you know, what happened with um, the, 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 the Taliban in Afghanistan was Donald Trump went and started negotiating directly with the Taliban over the head of the government of Afghanistan, and that completely undermined, undermined their credibility. I would not be surprised if back channels start getting open to Putin over Zelensky's head, and that will undermine him. Um, but, you know, we should learn from what happened in Afghanistan. And, and my film does go through, it just shows that, you know, if we'd stayed the course a bit longer, there would have been... A, that, and look, it's never going to be rosy there, put it that way, but what the worst possible outcome has had happened in Afghanistan. And if we just leave Ukraine suddenly, it'll be exactly the same. It's a similar sort of disaster. Just finally, do, do you have any hope for the situation in Afghanistan? I mean, I've read your piece, you know, I've, I've, it's a very personal story that you tell and people will, will see that if they go and watch the film. Do you think there's any hope, particularly for young women, the type of young women that you talk about that you've met? Um, well, look, some Afghans will, will will disagree with what, I, what I'm about to say, but it's, I, I strongly believe that, that resistance is important. There needs to be an alternative to the Taliban. That resistance is coming together under the leadership of Ahmed Massoud, the son of Commander um, Massoud, um, who was one of the great Northern Alliance leaders of, of the 80s and 90s. I think in the, if there's any future, it won't be a united Afghanistan. There'll be a balkanization where some parts of the North will be under a different slightly more liberal leadership, but I don't see the Taliban um, ever relinquishing the South, particularly as Pakistan uh, are in charge. And so for the question about women, it's, it's, not, it's not looking good any time in the future, in the next decade.